Uh, my name is Jordan Aguilar. I'm with the Las Vegas Raiders. I'm the youth football manager here uh, with the Raiders. Pretty much what that entails is I deal with all the youth and high school football sports uh, here in town and, and wherever else, um, where it's equipment donations, putting on camps, clinics, coaching clinics, um, you know, working with the youth day in, day out, um, bringing our active and our alumni players together with the youth here in this town. Um, that's really what I do. Uh, I, you know, I'm a Vegas guy. I've been here for 25 years of my life. Uh, went to high school here, um, played high school football here, stayed here, went to college at UNLV, um, graduated the communications minor, went back and coached high school football for a couple of years, and then did the director of football operations uh, for about four years. And then luckily just started over here about eight months ago. Um, I love it. Vegas is my home and I love the Raiders as well. So getting to mesh those two together and really working in something I'm passionate about, you know, with youth sports and high school sports on a day-to-day -day basis, it's been a lot of fun. So um, thank you guys for having me. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for being here and uh, Raider Nation and also UNLV alumni as well here. Uh, we have another special guest and this is Mr. Frosty Rucker and I'm going to spotlight his video. Mr. Rucker, if you could just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background in professional sports. Hey hi guys, I'm Frosty Rucker. I was a 2018 captain for the Raiders. I played 13 years in the NFL. I'd like to say I played 28 straight years consecutive of football. Um, from seven to 35 years old. Um, I had an awesome time playing professional sports, uh, being a great teammate, um, winning awards like this that I'd like to share with you guys. And um, yeah, ask your questions. I'm, I'm here, I'm open, and I'm ready to meet you all. Absolutely. And we'll, we'll start with Mr. Rucker and then we'll go over to Mr. Aguilera. Uh, Mr. Rucker, one of our kids in France wanted to know what is the thing that you loved most about being a professional athlete? And Mr. Aguilera, it'll be the same question for you. What is the thing you love most about your job? So Frosty, if, if you want to answer that. Yeah, uh, great question. Um, what I like the most is seeing the results after all the hard work. Uh, you put so much time into your craft. Uh, and you put the hours in to make yourself a professional and be able to uh, go out there and lead by example. And that all came from the work that was put in. You got to build a foundation of work, just like a house and has a foundation before you put up the walls and whatnot. And that's the same thing. A uh, firm believer of what you put in is what you get out and that equals success. So remember guys, the hard work uh, that you put out to see the results, uh, you can't cheat the grind. That's some solid, solid advice. Um, so we'll go over to Mr. Aguilera. Uh, what do you love most about your career? Yeah, just, I mean, obviously being in professional sports and being around the Raiders and the NFL, it's, I mean, it's, it's pretty wild walking in with, you know, Derek Carr and uh, Josh Jacobs and stuff like that every day, but really just getting to be with these youth and high school kids weekly and really getting to show them, you know, Vegas has most recently it's never had a professional sports team, definitely never had an NFL team. Um, so getting to show these high school kids and these youth kids something that they've never been a part of in their entire life and may never be at ever again, whether it's bringing a player or an alumni to a practice or a game, um, things like that, getting kids to an NFL game, which I'm sure 95% of them here in this town have never been able to do, um, things like that, and just seeing how excited they are and how willing they are and really just showing them, you know, the positives of football and where it can take you in life, whether it's on the field, off the field, you know, um, things like that. So that, that's really been a joy, just getting to, you know, bring those experiences to people who never get to experience those before. That's great. And uh, we have this question, we'll go over to uh, Frosty. And Frosty, this question com comes from Alejandra, and Alejandra is in Spain. Alejandra, you should be able to unmute to ask your question. Go ahead. Uh, why practicing this sport? She wants to know, why, why did you choose football? Uh, football for me, uh, it just spoke volumes. It's about the commitment, uh, playing verse, you know, verse one-on-one -on -one versus someone, uh, you know, complete dominance and winning that advantage when, you know, you know, you put the work in like I spoke of earlier. Uh, being a, a great teammate, uh, it helps when you got 10 other people on the field with you in a huddle and everyone's looking at each other. And, you know, it has so many great values that come with it, you know, time management, accountability, like I said, being a great teammate, uh, being a positive uh, speaker and a positive thinker. And um, 
those are the things that stuck out to me and made me really, really, really want to always show up every day to play football. Uh, there's a lot of sports that are more individual. Uh, there's, you know, a lot of sports that are less people on the field. Uh, for me, um, 11 on 11 uh, football, it did it for me. It was a, a time, you know, that the, oftentimes I grew up, I was a baby boy of the family and I had two older sisters. And it was the only time I had a chance to be around a lot of males and, you know, and a lot of influence like that with my coaches. My father wasn't in the house. So my coaches spoke volumes to me and they gave me life lessons. And until this day, I'm still connected with pretty much every single one of my coaches that I've ever uh, had a chance to lead me. So um, I think the team aspect of it is what really does it for me. Very good. Um, so we have a question and this will be for both of you. So we'll start with um, uh, Mr. Aguilar and we'll, and this comes from Mev and she is in Italy. Mev, you had a really awesome question. Feel free to ask. Thank you so much. Before, really, really nice to meet you. <laughs> then I would like to know what is the best teaching or lessons you have ever learned in recent years? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I think just, you know, for me in my position, I work with so many different people on a day to day basis. Um, it's really just having an open line of communication with everybody, making sure everyone communicates well together, make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, obviously, things aren't always going to be great and dandy and, you know, things aren't going to work out as you like them. But if you communicate and you're always talking, you're on the same page. Um, you know, we talk about football. The football players are always talking on the, on the field, you know, that's, that's how you stay together as a team. So um, really just being open with communication, whether it's a good dialogue or bad dialogue, it's always good to have it, you know, and um, everyone needs to be on the same page and learn from each other and you know, and be open to communication as well from other people. You know, it's not always, you may feel a certain way, but sometimes you got to, you know, listen to other people and what they have to say. So um, that's definitely one thing I learned early on is communicating with your leaders, communicating with people who work underneath you and communicating with your teammates, you know, um, it helps move the team along and, you know, you guys are all working for the same thing. So it helps you guys all be successful. That's a, a great lesson to learn in, in any profession. Um, so, Mr. Rucker, is the same question. What was some of the things that you learned uh, or took away from your career? Uh, to be able to uh, overcome adversity, um, it's not really a, how you got there, it's what you do with it. And everyone has a story to tell. Uh, not everyone got drafted, not everyone played at a big school. Uh, a lot of people worked jobs in college and just afforded the opportunity to, you know, have a chance to be on the field. And, um, being able to get over that adversity and not give up for your dream and having people there to support you like your teammates and whatnot. Uh, that's what it meant to me, you know? So again, I would just say to be able to get over adversity, it stuck out the most because everyone has a story and believe it or not, not a lot of people care about your story. It's what you do with your opportunity. That's, that's great. And we talk about, you know, the importance of hard work, the importance of de determination. And, you know, that's great that you guys in both of your careers kind of took away uh, similar things. So we have a question from Ayub in France. Um, you should be able to unmute and uh, ask your question. Yeah. Friend. So my question is that this is this your is sorry, is your um, car career um, in the USA as a NFL pro player opens you opportunities like in Europe or over the world, like for ads, for example, or for other sports. Thanks. That's all. Okay. So we'll, we'll start with, um, with Frosty and then go over to uh, Jordan and just, I think he just wants to know, did they open up opportunities for other ven career ventures? Yeah, uh, great question. Absolutely. Uh, playing professional sports opens up uh, a wheelhouse of different opportunities and to go, you know, across the seas and to meet uh, unique people. It's just another chance to be in front of people. You know, um, being a professional athlete, you get to be in situations that most people don't get to be in. And it's a really good treat, but it's what you do with it. You know, um, one thing I would tell you, if you, you meet people and they give you a business card, try emailing that business card and tell them thanks for the opportunity to meet you, you know? And so that, that one line of communication can go so, so far, they could be in a meeting room and your name might pop up and it can be from a 10 year ago conversation, but they have 
they remember you and it's like, oh, this person took the time to write me a message or send me a text message. Everyone does that and uh, or connect through social media. And it means so much. So again, taking advantage of those things. That's great advice. Mr. Aguilera, is there other um, opportunities that kind of arose from going into sports? We know that you had mentioned about UNLV and you kind of segued into professional sports. Yeah, I mean, really, um, sports open up. I mean, you work with so many different people on a day-to-day basis. Um, I was lucky to, when I was back in high school, work with uh, Mr. Dan Ventrelli, who's now the team president for the Raiders, um, built a relationship there, built a connection there. Um, and so you never know who you're going to meet in sports. Like you said, there's so many different avenues and so many different people involved. Um, like Frosty said, when, you know, you get a business card, you, you just want to always, you know, put your, you know, make sure they just remember you, you know, but, you know, being kind, being nice, uh, working hard and things like that. That's how people remember you as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, it opens you up to a lot. Um, it's really just about taking advantage of the opportunity when you get that opportunity as well. Absolutely. And we can't thank you guys enough for your kindness and spending time with us today. We will uh, go. We have a question from one of your neighbors uh, over there, and this is right down the street here in Las Vegas. And this is from Miss Quinn's class at Pinecrest Academy of Nevada. Uh, they have a question for Frosty. Frosty, Miss um, Quinn's class, are you guys able to unmute? There you go. How long did it take you to train? Well, it depends on what you're training for. Um, if it seems like for me, I've been training my whole life and I trained my whole life for that opportunity. Since I started football at the age seven, I think that was my job uh, audition meant how much hard work can I do? So for me, it just took year after year after year of training. But if you're talking about sports specific, um, I think a good two and a half hours would be a good time to train. Um, I think, you know, doing a combination of, you know, warm up, stretching, get into your workout, cooling down, stretching again. Um, and again, it's all on what, what specifically you're talking about here, but, you know, you're training to get to your goal. And if we're talking specifically, it's how you train. And I think a good two hours, two and a half hours will get you a good pump, good sweat, and uh, you'll feel the results. And, and on that, we'll, we'll stay on you and then we'll go to Mr. Aguilar about this question. One of our students in Florida, they wanted to know, do, is it hard to balance work and professional life? I would say, yeah, you know, and that's, that comes from the adversity. You know, if you're, you happen to, you know, say you're a professional in one aspect and you want to uh, do another passion project or something, juggling that's going to be difficult, you know, especially if you bring into having a family. Uh, you know, there's all these different things, again, adversity that comes up and uh, how you can get overcome that. So um, did I, I hope I answered that. No, you did. You're great. And uh, Mr. Aguilar, uh, have, is that a difficult thing as far as balancing work and professional life, especially when you're coming up, the Raiders being so brand new in our community? I can't imagine the amount of work that you guys had to do um, working overtime. Is that a difficult thing in your profession? Yeah, I mean, it definitely, you know professional sports are a little different than most careers, um, especially during the season. There's just so much going on um, and there's so much to do. Obviously every Sunday there's a game, um, but in between each Sunday, there's a lot, you know, a lot of different initiatives we're doing, whether I'm going to a high school, uh, presenting coach of the week, uh, doing equipment donations, things like that. Um, but you definitely have to find your balance. You know, you don't want to burn yourself out. I, I love this job and I love the Raiders. And I love being here, but I also have to find a balance as well. Um, just as professional, I know NFL players need their time off as well because they're grinding all day, every day. Um, so, you know, you work hard, you work hard, you work hard a lot, but you don't want to burn yourself out as well. So um, there's definitely a balance there. Uh, you know, sometimes, like I said, during the football season, it might be hard to find, but, you know, at some point you'll be able to find it and you'll be able to find a good groove and um, feel good about it. That's, that's great advice. And that, that kind of transcends with any career, not just in professional sports. We have a couple more student questions and we'll let you guys go. We'll start this, this one with Mr. Aguilera. This is from Angelina and she is in Munich, Germany. Angelina, you had an awesome question. Uh, you should be able to unmute to ask. ask. Yes, can you hear me? Yep, you're yes. good. 
Okay, so I'm sure you had a lot of success during your career, um, but I want to know what was your biggest challenge you had so far in your professional career or personally? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a great question. Yeah, great question. Because, you know, most people only want to talk about their successes most of the time. But no, it's definitely it's, it's a struggle. It's a grind to get to where you are. And I'm still working to get where I want to be. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I've definitely had my fair share of obstacles, whether it's, you know, not here, but whether it's at another place and you've got a boss that really grinds you and really works you hard and demands a lot out of you and um, expects a lot. Uh, you know, just trying to find that confidence in yourself to make sure that you can get the job done. Um, so, uh, you know, it's never, it wasn't anything crazy or anything like that, just really pushing through the grind and pushing through the adversity um, and getting through it on the other side and knowing you're going to be successful and having that confidence in yourself uh, to be successful. Because if you're confident in yourself, you're going to, you know, you're, you're going to figure out a way to get it done and, um, you know, do a good job with it. So, uh, yeah, so things like that. That's great advice. And again, transcends any career, man. So uh, we can't thank you guys enough uh, for the awesome work you guys are doing over at the Raiders. But for Frosty, same question. What are some of the, what were some of the biggest obstacles you had in your professional tenure? Um, for me, uh, overcoming injuries. Um, you know, as a professional athlete, people don't understand, you know, we don't just play on the game, you know, game day, you play, you have to practice. And then when you're professional, just think about every day is an all-star game or all-star practice, right? Uh, every single day you're getting evaluated. Every single day you're under a microscope on how you get to work, how you train. Uh, it's not just uh, playing football. It's the film study. It's uh, how you eat, how you do every single thing is being critiqued, right? So uh, saying all that to say, again, getting over an injury, people don't understand, you know, there's always a new draft every year or there's free agency. There's a lot of people that want your job. So, you know, doing a combination of making sure you're going to do your rehab on time and staying a little bit later and getting extra, extra ice, extra stretching, taking care of your body because in professional sports, your body is your business. And um, I think a lot of people don't really understand how grueling of time it is to put into your craft, especially coming back from an injury when there's all this unknown of all these people that want your job. So um, staying positive, eating right, uh, listening to your trainers, listening to the people rehabbing you, listen to the surgeon, you know, that performed a surgery on you or um, a physical therapist that maybe uh, have taught you a, a trick to get healthy. Uh, you have to be able to listen. You have to be able to communicate like uh, Mr. Aguilar uh, mentioned earlier. Um, and for me, getting over injuries was the toughest thing just because it's so mentally challenging uh, because again, I keep going back to everyone wants your job. So being able to get there every day on time and not being discouraged and not having a frown in your face and, you know, smiling through those moments and, you know, having a positive outlook that you're going to get back healthy and you're going to afford yourself another chance to compete. Um, it's one of the toughest things mentally, especially if you don't have the right support around you, you know, so it's good to have good support with your family, your significant other, uh, your kids, your cousins, your coaches, whoever it is that can give you that, you know, pat on the back and tell you, you know, we see you working hard. All those words of uh, encouragement mean something. And um, yeah. That's good. And we'll segue into the, like the last couple of questions for you guys. Uh, some of the kids in France, as well as in Florida and Nevada, they kind of sent the same question. So I'll just go ahead and, and sum it up here. They wanted to know what, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the importance of giving back? And can you tell us a little bit about the Stay Ready Football um, initiative that you, you've had? And then that question will kind of go over to Jordan about how the Raiders have given back in the community. So, Ralph, me first? Or Mr. You Cubs? first, yes, to talk about Stay Ready Football, your, your nonprofit. Yes, sir. So um, the one thing that I, I wanted to accomplish as I was in the NFL and as I ventured off outside of it as I retired was how do I give back? Um, to my community. I played for four different teams. I started with the Cincinnati Bengals. I was there for six years. Then I went to Cleveland uh, for one year. Then I went to play for the Arizona Cardinals for five. And I finished with the Raiders in Oakland in 2018. But over that whole period of time, I was in different communities helping different people as for my hometown. I would do a one-off event here, a football camp or something, 
but it didn't really sit well with me that I spent so much time in other states and other communities. So one of the things that I wanted to spearhead was being very active in my nonprofit and my Stay Ready Football, it just means the world to me because it's not literally just catered to just football. It's, it's catered for all sports, but football is the emphasis. So for instance, uh, we train kids. A lot of kids uh, like myself grew up uh, poverty struck and didn't have the means to afford to play. I, I missed my first year of football. I could have played because we didn't have money to sign me up, right? So now parents and kids are, are able to email and ask for um, guidance when it comes to registration for a sport or you may not have shoes and you, you, know, you, you may not have the right cleats. You don't want to get made fun of. You think other kids are mean and nasty. They don't, you know, they'll make fun of you. Well, with Stay Ready Football, you reach out, we talk about it, and we find a way to make sure you have those cleats or have a gym bag or have the uniform that you want. And um, it, it just means so much to me to see the kids that, you know, grow up on the same street that I grew up in, the same apartment complex, be able to sign up for any sport they want or be able to learn how to train because we train kids also. So we go to parks and we teach them foot ladders and we teach them football drills or if they need a basketball coach and there's enough kids to sign up, I'll find them a coach and they'll go out there and learn how to dribble with their left hand and their right and learn how to shoot and do layups and work the fundamentals. And also what the Stay Ready Football provides, we do an after school program. So right now we're currently in an elementary school in my hometown and we teach kids there that aren't signed up for sports outside of uh, football. They're not in new sports or outside of school. We do it there. So right after school, the, the bell rings, they come over to us and it's either me or another coach. And we teach them how to get the proper stance. We teach them how to take a handoff, right? We teach them how many steps or how many yards this is, you know, the bare minimum or not the minimum, just the bare foundation of the game of sport of football we provide that, that literature behind it. We print things so you can take it home and read it and say, I remember Coach Frost taught me about accountability. He taught me how to take a, a handoff. He taught me how to throw the ball and make a spiral. You know, he told me how to pick up a, a fumble and scoop and score, what that terminology means, right? So all these things lead to kids act, actually wanting to say, you know what, I might want to sign up for football just because I had football class and it was an after-school program. So it prides me to be able to, to give back to the kids that were just like me. So that's what I do. That is wonderful work. And, and one thing that I think that the kids should take away, at least from your story, is that on the field is only part of it. There's a whole nother aspect to it. And, and then during your career is one part of it. There's a whole nother aspect about post-career as, as well. Um, I'm going to go over to Mr. Aguilar. And Mr. Aguilar, if you could just kind of tell us some of the great work that, that the Raiders have done in the Las Vegas community through the Raiders Foundation and uh, some of the stuff that, that you helped be a part of. Yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. Like I said, I've been here the last eight months. And, I mean, we've done so much. Um, you know, we're new to this community. So really just trying to entrench ourselves in this community and learn where the needs are, um, how many kids, I mean, how many kids are in, it, in need like in need of it um, and really just getting ourselves out there. You know, I think last week alone, I think I donated over 250 pairs of cleats to five different high schools, uh, practice jerseys, uh, practice pants, things like that. And really just like shoes, towels, things where, you know, kids that are less fortunate, you know, can use things like that. Um, going out and putting on youth camps and throwing uh, free flag football leagues uh, for kids who aren't able to afford it. Um, getting them the jerseys, the uniforms, the flags, the footballs, things like that. Um, and really just showing them the game of football and how rewarding it can be. Um, like you said, on and off the field. Um, it, it's been great and being able to partner with our players and our alumni, um, working with them, uh, getting out in the community and things like that. Uh, it's been great. Uh, so, you know, like I said, it's been very rewarding for myself. Um, but it's also great to see just how much we can do and how much is, you know, how much there's left to do uh, here in the city. And like I said, these kids in Vegas, Las Vegas have never had a professional football team before, probably never met a professional football player, seen a professional football game in person. Um, so getting to bring that opportunity to them and seeing just how much excitement and joy that brings to them, uh, it's been great. We've got a lot of work to still do um, and we're still going, but uh, yeah, it's, it's been a good start so far. 
Well, we appreciate you uh, in the community and everything that you guys have done. Before we let you go, I know we have you guys a, this. We have you guys a little bit uh, extra time. But the final question: What advice would you have for all of these kids as they kind of go off in the world and figure out what they want to do? And we'll start with you, Jordan. Yeah, I'd say just just keep working hard. You know, uh, mm-hmm. life's tough. Life's not always easy. Uh, you know, you you're going to run into some obstacles, like you said, but you know, if you work hard and you're good to people, um, that's going to take you a long way. Uh, you know, that's two things that I try to live by. I try to, you know, always being good to people, no matter what, you never know when you're going to need somebody or you never know when you're going to meet somebody again down the line. Um, so always being good to people, you want to leave a good impression with them and just work hard. You know, sometimes the work that you're doing is you may not enjoy it, or it's kind of, it seems tedious or, you know, minor at the time, but if you're working hard at it, it's going to, progress you to where you want to go and the work that you want to do. So really just work hard and, you know, be kind to people. That's fantastic advice. And the same question over to Frosty, if you could uh, give any advice to these students as they go off in the world, what would you tell them? Well, it's just have the right attitude for your work. You know, like Mr. Aguilar just said, you know, you're going to work really hard to achieve whatever you want to want to achieve, but your attitude is going to speak the values for you. Um, there's a, a certain type of attitude or um, a word my father actually taught me. He's like, you know, I can ask everyone here, do you guys understand what the word win means? And everyone thinks it's just winning the game and things of that nature. But what my dad broke it down to me, he told me, what's important now? So are you doing the things that are important right now to achieve your goals? And sometimes you got to sit back and think, uh, do I need to be on this video game or can I work on my craft? Uh, do I need to, uh, should I be messing around outside or should I be studying, you know? So what's important now? And that's what win means. 